Township of Persephone Troy Hills regular Township Council meeting of August 22nd, 2023. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in accordance with the requirements of the Open Public Meetings Law by filing the notice in the office of the Township Clerk and by posting the meeting notice on the bulletin board at the Municipal Building on December the 21st, 2022, where it has remained posted since that date. A legal notice appeared in the Daily Record and the Newark Star-Ledger on December the 28th, 2022. Councilman Negley, would you please say the flag salute? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Thank you. Mr. Madden, roll call, please. Mr. Caripi? Here. Mr. DePiro? Here. Mr. Musella? Here. Mr. Neglia? Here. Ms. Grignani? Here. Also in attendance are Mayor James Barbario, Business Administrator Jamie Klein, Township Attorney Michael Lavery. Township Clerk Colette Madden, and we also have our uh, CFO here today, Leonard Ho. Council President, we have a quorum. You may begin. Thank you. Upcoming meetings, September the 5th, 2023, at 7 p.m., is an agenda meeting. September the 19th, 2023, at 7 p.m., is our regular meeting. A couple of minutes, please. Your motion? I will move the agenda meeting for 7-11-23 and the regular meeting 7-25-23. Approval of the minutes. Second. Motion made by Mr. DePiro, seconded by Mr. Caripi. Roll call, Mr. Caripi. Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Mr. Misella? Yes. Mr. Neglia? Yes. And Ms. Grignani? Yes. Motion passes. Mayor Barbario? Yes, I have some things to report. Um, first, um, two weeks ago, we had a neighborhood watch, um, citizens watch group, um, with uh, the Mazabrook and it went very, very well. They were very um, involved, very inclined to um, keep it going. Um, I'll tell you that, that our officer, Rima, does, a, does an excellent job. I know Paul Carifa, you were there, Councilman, and so was uh, uh, Councilman Negua. And the next one we have, I'll invite two more other council members because you can't have three. And then we'll, you know, we'll circle around to that. I'd like to also report our farmer's market has, is really going well, very, very well. It was actually a good event this last uh, Friday, and it's coming Friday. If it doesn't rain, this will be another good one. But on September 1st, we'll be having a band, um, and the residents there, a lot, of, a lot of the residents would like us to move our summer concerts to Friday night, uh, the ones that we have on Thursday, so it could be a bigger event. With regards to Saturday's Indian Independence Day, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank he lays on to the Indian community, Jigger Shah, for all his hard work and everything that he did in it. Rajani Patel, who's the president of the uh, uh, Indian American uh, Senior Association, um, it was a great event. Uh, it was well attended, and uh, it definitely exemplifies the diversity here in Parsippany. Today, I had the motorcade at the Parsippany Hills High School uh, for football, another great thing that's going on in Parsippany. And also, I'd like to talk about the Fall Festival um, with regards to September 17th. Um, there was um, statements made on social media, which if you know me, some to me were derogatory statements with regards to the administration being anti-Jewish, which is not the case. And um, one of the individuals is here today, which I'm glad to see, with regards to that. This was planned, and so you know the street fair has always been the third week in September. I changed it last year because we had a food truck festival going on, not aware of the Jewish holiday the following week, which was the 25th at the time. Okay, so we moved it. We brought it back to the third week, which it has always been. Under every mayor, it's been the third week. We did confide, confide with the rabbi from Adat Shalom before we even said the 17th, prior to that. So I did speak to a woman yesterday who had, who you know, emailed me, that, you know, she said she emailed me during the week, I never received the email, and the reason why I didn't receive it because she was sending it to the wrong email. So we had a discussion, and I said I'll try to move it to the 24th. 
So then we decided to move it to September 24th, and then that was another Jewish holiday, which is Rosh Hashanah. So I called the rabbi back, I spoke with him, and he, he said, listen, Rosh Hashanah is on the, on the, on the, on the, well, the Sunday, you know, he had no issue with us having it on the Sunday. So I decided, you know what, to avoid it all, we're going to move it to October 1st. So October 1st will be the fall festival this year. Um, going for it. But there was no intentions of insulting anybody. And anybody that wants to make derogatory statements with regards to this administration being anti-Jewish is false and it's not true. I work, I work with a lot of the rabbis in town. I know them personally. And we have a great, great reputation with them. Not only that, a great relationship with them. And the rabbi even said that to me yesterday. So when people want to go on social media and pound their chest, and we become um, keyboard warriors. All you had to do was call me. That's all you had to do. Just call, pick up the phone, call me. Like I spoke to the woman yesterday, we had a great conversation. I said we'll be more cognitive in the future. We have all the holidays going on from 24, 25, so we kind of know every holiday that there is. But that being said, it has always been on the third Sunday since the street fair started, when Kiwana started it, I forget when, and then the township took it over. So with that being said, I do have um, some other statements I would like to make if you want to give me the time, um, Councilwoman. Of course. Um, with regards to an article that was put in and paid for by the Democrats um, into the Parsippany Focus, <clears throat> and I'm going to uh, explain this, uh, and, and I think it's important, because what I don't, what I'm not in favor of, I have no issue with people disagreeing with me on issues, on things like that. But putting false information in a, in a, in a local paper with regards to massive tax hikes and all that kind of stuff, when we've had budget meetings and we explained our, our position. But it was ignored anyway. So this message was from Judah Hernandez, Bernard Clark, and then Matt Kavanaugh. And, they, and I'm just going to point out some of the stuff that they, they, they uh, talk about with regards to what this administration done, done wrong. But the funny thing is they fell asleep over the past four years from 18, 19, 20, and 21. Uh, Mr. Clarkson likes to boast that he's a CPA, but I guess his skills weren't, weren't really effective in those other years. But with that being said, I just want to read some things that was stated in that Focus article which I really thought I was reading the Star Magazine and um, the, Sun, the Sun Magazine at the time, but in 2023 alone, this is coming from the Democrats, the, this mayor and council passed a massive, undefined 750,000 salary adjustment, nearly four times the 200 salary adjustment included in the prior budget. So we explained at the budget meeting, of course I can't go after Matt Kavanaugh because he wasn't even in existence at that time. That, that $750,000, and I have, I have our CFO here, was for, put, put in there for adjustments that might have to be made considering we are negotiating four contracts. They knew this. In fact, Bernie Clarkin said that he spoke to a BA from another town. I don't know if you remember this conversation. And um, from what I understand, the BA said this might be a way that they hide money and, and stuff like that. And I, I stated it back, and I said it again, that if Mr. Clarkin wants to bring that VA in to sit down with RBA and with myself, we'd be more than happy to educate that person, him or her, whoever it is. But we heard nothing back. Then you hear the mayor has also budgeted 1091000 for salaries and expenses in his own office and administrator's office. This is a $264,000 increase, which equates to them 32% increase over 827,000 paid just in 2022. We explained this, and they failed to even to understand it. What we did was we redirected certain positions to the proper departments. So by doing that, when you redirect it to an, from another department, department to the proper department, if you increase one department 30%, you're decreasing the other department by 32, so it's a wash. And we explain that, but of course that fell on deaf ears. Now they like to use the word sewer raid, that we've been raiding the sewer. 
But I guess 18, 19, 20, and 21, they, they didn't, you know, I guess nobody rated it then when it was left uh, total surpluses of $23 million. And now we have no surplus in 2021, but that's beside the point. It just doesn't go away automatically. But what they, what they failed to, to state and, and, and tell you that, they said that we use 1.8 million in surplus, okay, and we increased spending by that much. What we did was we used surplus from the sewer and we explained, we replenished it from one year to the other. Those prior years, it was never replenished. But it was also used in those prior years as anticipated revenue, which I'm going to get to. Because anticipated revenues is where the township, in those four years, now I wish the former mayor was here, but he's not. He, you know, of course, they send up other people to come after me, which is fine. I'm fine with that. Um, and we're going to get to the over anticipation of revenues. Because that's how it's gotten to the hole, and that's why the township had to fix what was broken. Um, but but of course, we explain that to them, and that fell on deaf ears. So let's talk about the anticipation of revenue, which was grossly overestimated in 2021. You see, the council, they keep saying that the council, they voted on the four budgets. The last budget the council voted on, they were pretty much forced to vote on it, because the, the DCA said if you don't vote on it, if I can quite remember, you're going to be fined. I forget how much it was, an astronomical amount that if you didn't vote on it. What the DCA allowed the former administration to do was use the law of average over the last so many years to figure out its revenues and its budget, which the local finance board does not allow towns to do. But they gave them special dispensation. What's that mean? They let them break the laws and the rules for that one year. So they grossly overestimated the revenues by how much? Going into 2022, the revenues were under eight and a half million dollars. Eight and a half million dollars. Well, we have to make that money up. Okay, so that's why the town got into the situation it was in. Now, I went over this with our auditor when I was when I came back in 2022. We had a lot of things we had to figure out for this town, and, and we did it. And she's going to get to that later on. Okay, so so but but they failed to tell you that. And, you know, what I find funny is how they, they, they want to come up and voice that this administration did this, that, and this. Well, no, we put it back onto financial stability is what we've done. And that will be explained later on with regards to that. I mean, Mr. Clark is not here tonight, and I wish he was here, but he's not. I'm sure he'll come up to the next meeting. Um, but he, you know, he, he does come up. Yeah, I'm a CPA. But there's a difference between the CPA and the CF, CMFO. A chief municipal financial officer, which Len Ho is, certified with the state of New Jersey. Corporate accounting, as you know, and individual accounting is a lot different than public accounting in townships. It's a lot different. Okay? We explain so many of these things that, that, that they put in there that it becomes frustrating to continue to listen to it and think that I'm not going to respond. For four years, Rome was burning. And Mr. Corkin was nowhere to be found. None of them were anywhere to be found. Just to understand the fact that they keep saying that um, the former mayor, Seriano, stopped using the surplus. Why did he stop using it? Because he used it all. There's nothing left to use. That's why it stopped. It didn't stop magically because he decided he wanted to stop it. There was no surplus to use in 2021. That's why it stopped. Okay, but he used it significantly over 18, 19, 20. And if you look at, and you go to the records of 2010, starting in 11, 12, 13, you get to see the percentages of how our surplus increased. When you get to 18, 19, 20, it starts to decrease. And it goes down, 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 and down. Okay? To sit here and say he stopped rating, uh, well, he had no choice because he didn't have it. Okay, with that being said, with that being said, what you ask for, I have no problem, and I never have had a problem with somebody disagreeing with me with methods, the way you do things. But to come up there, to put an article in, a full page article, that is not factual, I'm going to respond to. And I don't, I really, it, it doesn't matter if you're Democrat or Republican, if you're not going to be truthful, then you're going to have an issue. It's that simple. I can't wait for the order to come up. We got a really good report this year. And we're very prudent in what we've done. 
in 2022. They keep saying that the mayor and the administration and the council raised taxes 14.6%. I don't know the difference between a tax levy and a tax rate. You need to know the difference between both of them. A tax levy is the increase of the budget increasing from one year to the other. That is not your tax rate. That is not where your taxes increase. The increase in 2022 was 3.3% total, not 14.6% on the tax rate. Yes, the budget did increase by that much. Why? Because you were eight and a half million in the hole when you first when I first stepped foot in the door. That is why. And if you want to straighten out the town and you think you're going to sit here and have zero or uh, no tax increases after you you go for eight and a half million deficit, good luck. You can't run a town. Well, I wasn't going to let that happen. I'm running a town, and we're running it better than it's been run before. That being said, I thank you, Council President, for giving me the opportunity to speak, and I'm sure members of the public are going to challenge me, and I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Township Council, I have uh, something in regard to our Economic Development Committee. On August the 12th, there was a ribbon-cutting ceremony for Eli's Eatery and Huckleberry Children Play Center at the Galleria at the ten, uh, Galleria 10 Mall. The Economic Development Committee will be presenting a plaque to Training Innovations, 90 Halsey Road, Suite yep. 305, on Wednesday, August the 23rd at 5 p.m. They are celebrating one year of their podcast on helping small businesses. We will also have an open house and a ribbon cutting at AFC Urgent Care, 1160 Route 46 West on Wednesday, August the 23rd at 5.30 p.m. They will also be hosting an open house from 4.30 to 6.30 and the public is invited. Our next Economic Development Committee meeting is on Wednesday, September the 6th at 6.30 p.m. at 90 East Halsey Road third floor conference room. The public is invited. Please RSVP to Chairman Frank Cahill at 973-559-6000. Any other council members would like to speak? I have two items, Council President. I'm sorry Bernie is not here tonight because this is first statement is to him. First, he challenged me last donations that I received at the public meeting, at our last meeting, implying that there was something illegal. They were legally received and legally reported, but he implied. And then he writes a poison pen letter, a keyboard warrior, uh, attacking my integrity and my reputation. I'm sorry he's not here to hear this, but I'm sure it'll get back to him. Bernie's accusations and assumptions are pathetic. I heard where, somewhere that liars and thieves judge everyone by their standards. I'm not sure if this is the case here, but I do need to set the record straight. The park development that Bernie refers to was a part of round three of Parsippany's Affordable Housing Agreement with the New Jersey courts. On the Township Council and on the Planning Board, included several other locations also that were part of our agreement with the courts. I did not seek donations from Park or any other location during that period, and they did not offer any. After serving Parsippany Township in many capacities for the past 58 years, 46 of those years as an elected official, I decided not to seek re-election. My term on the Township Council ends on December 31st, 2023, and so does my 25-year service to the planning board. So why would anyone want to donate to me? The reasons are simple. I have been involved in many, many organizations over that time that have touched many lives. When Money Magazine and other publications list Parsippany as one of the best places to live and work, I like to feel that I have been a part of the collective wisdom that got us here. Some of those people whose lives that I have touched want me to stay involved in Parsippany even after my term ends. 
the Little Leagues, soccer, tricky trays, ad journals, fundraisers for so many worthy organizations in town cost money. For the past 40 years, all of my township council salary and some of my election fund donations have gone back to those dork organizations in town. The $7,800 that you are so concerned about, that's you being Bernie, will all go back to those organizations until the money runs out. Bernie is the only person in 58 years attempting to question my integrity and tarnish my reputation. At all of the organizations and committees that I have led, participated in, or supported in those 58 years, I have never seen Bernie at any of them. He is an opportunist and has only looked out for himself. I sincerely hope that he's not elected. I wish he was here to hear me say that in person. I'm sure it'll get back to him. And my second message is the same article that uh, the mayor referred to from Hernandez, Clarkin, and Kavanaugh. The council campaigns are heating up and along with it distortions and half-truths become the norm. I would normally just endorse Karifi, Kandel, and McGrath as the best candidates to continue restoring fiscal responsibility to Parsippany. However, the Democratic candidates for council are expressing alarm about the budget increases in 2022 and 2023 produced by the all Republican mayor and council. Where were they for the four years under Michael Soriano, 2018 to 2021? During the four years under Soriano, the fund balances of the water department, sewer department, no utility, and township were reduced from $8 million to $680 surplus. He constantly pushed the can down the road whenever he could get away with it. Soriano delivered his State of the Town address at a special meeting that he called on Friday, February 7, 2020. His speech was filled with doom and gloom, which he blamed on everybody but himself. He blamed the zoning board. He blamed the township council. He blamed the previous administration. He was setting us up for a huge increase in taxes that he would propose in the 2020 budget. The BA, Fred Carr, and Soriano issued an order to defer all capital spending to 2022, eliminate all scheduled overtime, eliminate all professional education or attendance at training seminars unless required by coll collective bargaining, eliminate attendance at the New Jersey League of Municipalities, freeze all hiring, except Soriano could continue to hire all of his cronies, and freeze all promotions. This mandate produced a serious manpower shortage in the police department, DPW, parks and forestry buildings, the utilities, and all the other departments. Despite all of this, Soriano wanted the council to approve a budget that was not statutorily correct, including a $5 million loan plus interest that must be paid off within five years, and a fund balance of $1 million that may not be used, overestimating revenue and underestimating expenses. He blamed the, pre the previous administration for leaving him, not leaving him enough surplus. The township auditors had identified a number of serious errors in the budget and could not certify his budgets. All of these deferments simply pushed the can down the road. Every department had to fill those vacancies starting in 2022 and continuing into 2023. Where were Hernandez, Clark, and Kavanaugh during Soriano's fiasco? Why weren't they concerned about the budget during those four years? We certainly could have used their help in reining in Soriano's mismanagement. They didn't even offer a whimper. The only positive is that the two Democrats on the Township Council also voted not to allow Soriano to borrow $5 million to balance his budget. Credit to those two councilwomen. Anyone else from the council that would like to speak? Yeah, I'd like to say something. Okay. Well, first, um, I didn't see this article until uh, it was handed to me today, and I can't tell you how disheartened I am to read it and how a man 
Mr. Clark and can say such things about Mr. DiPiero, who's done so much for this community. Uh, I've been involved with Little League since 1988, and Mr. DiPiero has not only sponsored one team, but sometimes many teams during the course of every year I've been involved. And that same goes for the other Little Leagues, the soccer clubs, the, all the cancer societies that ask for donations and so forth. And I can understand why he accepted some of these donations, which were perfectly legal and reported, because he wants to continue to give back to the community he loves so much. So I'm very disappointed in Mr. Clark, and I thought much more of him than this. But for him to go and publicly say something like this and then go and write something like this, it's very disheartening to know that he's this type of human being. Thank you. Anybody else? Um, I was a running mate with Mr. DiPiero. I'm glad that you're smiling because it was a great experience for me to be his running mate with Mr. Karifi also for these past eight years. Um, I have known Mike for over 30, 35 years. And the article that was placed by Mr. Clarkin was disheartening. Um, Mike is asked to go to many events. And yes, we don't go for free. We are asked to make a donation. And uh, everything that Mr. DePiro has received monetarily are on his elect reports. Nothing is being hidden. And it was my honor, and I say that truthfully from my heart, that it was my honor to be a candidate and to be his running mate these last eight years. Township Attorney, Mr. Lavery? Uh, yes, no report, Council President. Business Administrator, Mr. Cryan? Thank you, Council President. Uh, just real quickly, I wanted to uh, talk uh, about the audit. Um, Valerie Dolan, uh, our auditor, is here uh, with Lenho, our CMFO. Um, the 22 audit, we had a, a, an exit interview uh, a few days or last week uh, regarding this, and, and a couple of the terms that were talked about, just to kind of summarize it real quickly, um, there's no major uh, incidents. Uh, overall, it's a thousand times better uh, than before. The finances are finally stabilized. Um, those were a couple of things that, that were mentioned. Uh, if you don't have an understanding of what an audit is, it's an independent uh, look into our finances. So you have uh, uh, an independent auditor who is bound by their ethics and also by generally accepted accounting principles and standards uh, from the comptroller's office and standards from DCA that uh, uh, gives them a framework of how to do the audit and um, with uh, uh, in order to not waste any more time I'll uh, turn this over to uh, uh, Lennon Valerie great Miss Dolan please Mr. Ho oh just tap as leave it's on no no You did change the batteries. There you there go. go. There you go. Birthday present. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Yes, once again, I am here um, to present the audit. Um, I am, once again want to say it's actually a pleasure to come to Persephone and do the audit. For those who are, audit is a very involved process. We start usually, and we are probably here and processing probably a good month worth of time we spend going through all of the information that the township provides. I do want to give you a few financial highlights. Um, the tax collection rate for the township uh, was 99.35%, which is a fantastic collection rate. Um, now I want to cover some fund balance issues. Um, fund balance, the current fund balance as of December 31st, 2022, was $6,437,746, which is actually an increase of a little over $5 million. That puts that fund balance back to where you were at the pre-pandemic level. So we're back to where we were in 2019, which I'm happy to report. 
also really the realization on this $5 million really came from a few vague main reasons. Number one, obviously we result there was some settlement of large numbers of inner funds that were in the report that restricted fund balance that were all cleared. Uh, there were multiple deferred charges that were required to be raised in the 22 budget that were related to deficits and operations over expenditures that occurred in both budgets of 2020 and 2021. All of that money was funded and paid off during the 22 year, bringing your finances and rebuilding your surplus. Your water utility was fund balance had a little over $3.4 million, which was also an increase of about $400,000. Your sewer utility had $5.6 million, which is also an increase of about 300,000. So the utilities are also starting their rebound. And then lastly, the golf utility actually has the one utility that had a decline, and it, was, it had a decline of about 400,000, but that was mainly due to some capital that was being spent and fund balance that was being anticipated for the golf utility. Interestingly enough, during the pandemic years, only increases that you had in 2021 and 22 and in 20 and 21 was in the golf utility. All the other utility, all the other surpluses were such a decline. Golf kind of held your, their own and now they're feeling their own. I am happy to report as the administrator said that seven of the 13 recommendations in last year's audit were resolved. All seven of those were in the area of finance. They were, so I'm very happy to say those finance recommendations you are in the process of resolving the other few recommendations, which at this point I would say are merely housekeeping type recommendations. You know, Glenn did a fantastic, your CFO did a fantastic job clearing the most important and critical recommendations in 22, and now he's going to address the little housekeeping cleanup type recommendations. The report also has two suggestions to management, which are my report to future audits for the uh, township. One of them is a new accounting standard because you know the accounting, we must keep ourselves occupied by constantly releasing new standards. So once again, for next year's audit, I'll have a new standard to implement. Fortunately for a municipality, it's more than the disclosure only. It doesn't affect the financial statements. And then secondly, is the area of pandemic funding. The, district, the township received large numbers of dollars from the federal government. We audited them through our program, through our single audit and our audit. However, they are subject to federal audit. They could come out at any time and look at any individual expense, any individual expense that you had within those programs. And sometimes we always say, you know, we're difficult auditors. When they come in, there's no negotiations. It's this is either right or it's incorrect. Fortunately, when we came through and we audited them the first year, we did have a finding. But in the second year, that finding has been resolved. So we are in great shape for the federal funds, for those FEMA funds. But it's possible they could come out and look at your records. I did want to say, you know, this is the rebound. 22 is a rebound year. Hopefully we are on the right trajectory to bring you back. So if you have any questions, I am here to answer questions for you. Council, are there any questions? I'd just like to thank Valerie for her, her dedication. Uh, she put in a lot of time during 2018 and 2021 to try to get us on the right track. And we're back now. Thank you, Valerie. I'd also like to make a comment that your firm worked very hard during 2022 to get us where we are. And there was a lot of uh, discussions, and she knows, uh, not heated so much the fact that some tough decisions had to be made. And they were very um, um, upfront with me what had to be done. And the only course we had was the one we had last year. And we tried every way to not move forward that way, but it did fix the problem. We talked about that. Mm -hmm. Fix the problem significantly. And not only that, we're looking in 24 and 25, you know, our rateable base is going to increase by $200 million um, and possibly more. You know, once Top Golf is done, the Chick-fil-A, but there's other uh, factors involved in that. And you're looking at close to, and I could be wrong, but don't quote me on it. I'm just going to give a ballpark figure. About six million dollars in extra revenue coming into the town, and that's going to be a significant amount of money. So, you know, the, the, a lot of a lot of things uh, went into it. A lot of tough decisions went into it. But I'm, I'm, I don't mean this in any way negative to anybody. I have no problem making a tough decision, none whatsoever, and I'll continue to make them as long as the town can rebound the way it rebounded. 
So now I want to thank you, Ray, and everybody for your, you know, the time that was put in. I know we went above and beyond, and you know, uh, council, Pre council vice president made a very good uh, point. When you take the infrastructure, you take the capital budget, and you offset it for another year, which is 2022, which is what they did. We had, you know, and when you know residents are upset, uh, the roads are are in disrepair. Well, yeah, they are because nothing was done in 2021 and 20 and 21 and some in 20. Once you start canceling out and you start to um, move over your capital, not only does it get worse to try to catch up, it gets more expensive. And that's basically what's, what was happening here in Parsippany. Our numbers are up on the capital portion of it. We're trying to fix as many roads as we can. You saw I gave you, I gave you guys the anticipated uh, road work that's going to happen, but we're behind. And it's, it's not due to the fact that we couldn't do it. It's because it wasn't funded. So thank you, Valerie. Thank you, Valerie. Thank, 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 thank you. you. Yeah. Any council members would like to talk about their committee reports? I don't see any. <clears throat> Engineering, please. Engineering report 2021 road resurfacing curb and sidewalk program. The annual road resurfacing curb and sidewalk project is on hold pending negotiations with the contractor. No council action required. Rockaway River flood wall levy inspection. Our consultant is working on preparing design details and a cost estimate for the maintenance and repair work to the flood wall and levy. Recent site inspections were made to aid the design of the repairs. Once the design and necessary permitting is complete, the project will be advertised for bid, no cancel action required. North Beverick Road Streetscape Project Phase 1. The bids for the first phase of North Beverick Road Streetscape were opened May 3rd, 2023, and the total bid prices were significantly higher than budgeted. We were granted an extension to award the project and we will rebid the project at a more appropriate time. No council action required. 2023 road resurfacing curb sidewalk program. The annual road resurfacing curb sidewalk project is in construction. Work is anticipated to continue into the middle of August. No council action required. Mount Tabor Street improvements phase seven. Construction of the Mount Tabor improvements phase seven project has begun. We anticipate work continuing through September. No council action required. Drumlin Drive stream cleaning. The NJDEP permits have been issued for this project. Our consultant is finishing the design and we will, we intend to bid the project later this year. No council action required. Putting Stone Heights Road Improvement Project Phase 2. The second phase of Putting Stone Heights Road Improvement Project is in design. We anticipated bidding this project later this year. No council action required. Jefferson Road Improvements. We received a $760,000 NJDOT grant for improvements to Jefferson Road from Precipity Road to Smith Road. The improvements include the resurfacing of the roadway, minor intersection upgrades, and significant drainage improvements, particularly near the East Halsey Road intersection. Permit applications and plans are being prepared. The project will be bid once NJDEP permits have been issued. No council action required. Lake Intervale Area Street Improvements. The first phase of the Lake Intervale Area Street Improvements project is in design. We anticipate bidding this project later this year. No council action required. Sylvan Way Culvert Improvements. We are working with our design professionals on the preparation of plans and the NJDEP permit application. We anticipate bidding this project in early 2024, no council action required. Roadway design projects, the following projects are in design where proposals have been requested. Troy Brook stream cleaning, Silver Way sidewalk improvements, river and stream desnagging plans and permits, Et Road traffic study, no council action required. Thank you. There are no uh, correspondence. Bids taken, to be taken, 824-23 wastewater treatment plant structural repairs. On 8-30-23-1-2025 Ford E-450 Type 3 Class 1 Ambulance. And there are no proposals or quotations. Public session. I'd like to make a motion to open public session. Second. Motion made by Mr. Musella, seconded by Mr. Karifi. Roll call, Mr. Karifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Misella? Yes. Mr. Neglia? Yes. Ms. Grignani? Yes. The floor is open to the public. You have five minutes to speak. Please just state your name uh, for the record. Thank you. Hi, my name is uh, Raymond Gallup. Um, I read the Parsippany Patch article of July 20th, 2023. 
it uh, was titled the 150K plus salaries for Parsippany superintendent and principals. And um, I saw that the superintendent was making 247,500 a year. And then it went down for other people to uh, hunt in the 190,000 range and so forth. And I looked at my tax bill. The district school tax is more than 60% of the township bill on my, on my taxes. Um, I also looked on the Parsippany Board of Ed, May 11, 2023, the superintendent bulletins prior year, pages 67 to 86. And I noted that there was 320 people plus making 100,000 or more a year and I totaled it up and it came to about $37 million and 700,000. Now that doesn't include health benefits and retirement and so forth. And it doesn't include people making less than that a year. So I just wanted to ask, I noticed on the tax bill there's a deduction for veterans. I would hope that they would be considered like each year as the taxes go up, that the deduction would go up as well, because it's like $250 now. And I would just bring it to your attention, and I hope they would be considered, as well as retirees living on fixed incomes, that they have some kind of deduction as well, because the tax bills are, as you know, they're going in one direction, they're going up all the time so that's all that i can contribute I, really that the school board's autonomous from the um municipal government so we really don't have a say in salaries but the only question i have not a question as i don't know if you fill out i think it's an sd1 form where your taxes can get frozen i don't know if you do that but if you contact our and we can help you out with that our tax assessor the you know that's where they freeze seniors taxes I don't know if you do that, um, but that's something that you might want to consider if you don't do it. And so you can call my office tomorrow, and we'll, I'll direct you to the um, our tax assessor. I think that's it. Hi, good evening. Uh, is this still on? Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> uh, my name is Kendra Von Aiken. I'm coming to you tonight to point out that this year's fall festival was originally planned for the second day of Rosh Hashanah, one of the high holy days of the Jewish religion. As of this morning, it had been moved to the 24th, which is Arab Yom Kippur, the day leading into the holiest day of our year. I appreciate learning tonight that it has been moved to October 1st instead. Mayor, you stated tonight that it has always been done on the third Sunday in September. While this does make things easier for scheduling and planning a big event like this, it also doesn't take into consideration the religious holidays that are not static every year. They follow a lunar calendar. It took me 30 seconds yesterday to Google and find a list of all religious holidays for 2023 to determine what a better date would have been for the fall festival. And the first is where I had landed. We live in a diverse town, lots of cultures and religions represented. represented. There's an interfaith council which meets to discuss issues and concerns around the community. Last year, I know for a fact that several rabbis contacted the town council leadership requesting a rescheduled town council meeting since the rescheduled date fell on Yom Kippur. Again, the most holy day in the Jewish religion. It would have taken a quick email or phone call to any one of the wonderful clergy in this town to ask which dates to avoid scheduling meetings and events on. It didn't seem like that had happened. In fact, this should be done at the beginning of every year before scheduling town events and meetings. I feel bad for the vendors that have committed to the fall festival thinking it's going to be on September 17th and now finding out just two and a half weeks prior that it's being rescheduled. The fact that Jewish holidays have not been considered now two years in a row by the town when scheduling events is insulting. I'd like an explanation of why this is happening and why I shouldn't consider this administration adversaries to the Jewish community. Oh, Thank you. So. I'll answer that question real simple because we're not. And when you go on social media as a public official, which you are, and you call out and you say, we're pretty much saying we're like anti-Semitic. 
in a way. We are not. We're not anti-Jewish. We're not anti-anything. I base what I believe. Uh, what's that? No, I'm sorry, sir. Oh, um, and, I, and I read what you wrote in there, and it's pretty, pretty darn derogatory, saying that the administration doesn't care. That's nonsense. That's a way for you to get attention. That's where that was. Now, that would be like me confronting you on a Board of Education meeting, which I'm going to probably do. But the bottom line is that you used words that incited people. But those people actually called me. And we had great dialogue and great discussion. You did not call me. May I reply? No, I'm sorry. You had your five minutes. I had two minutes. No, you, there's no back and forth. There's no there's back and forth. I'm sorry. Okay. So he can call you. Well, I'll, I'll get you at the school board. We can do it then. That would be completely unprofessional, but you do Oh, oh, but, so this, what you but, just did but wasn't this is not as an elected official. You called me as an elected official. I'm calling you as an elected official. Okay. Anyone else would like to come forward, please? Hi, Betty Weika. Um, just had a question. I was looking at the sign ordinance for the town and um, the rules for what signs can be put up where, just to um, make sure things are being followed. Um, and I noticed that campaign signage is supposed to come down 14 days post uh, event. At least that's what the website says. And I noticed that there's quite a few campaign signs still up all around town. Um, so I thought I would just uh, bring it to your attention. Uh, I know we have a candidate and the head of the Republican committee here, so I thought maybe you guys could look into that. On my way here from Troy Hills, I saw no less than three. Um, and I've seen five on my way to shop, right? So uh, if you could help out with that, that'd be great. Thank you. Thank you. Just your name. Just state your name on the record. You don't need to. You're fine. You just state your name on the record. Um, my name. My name. It's on. It's on. Yeah, you're on. Yeah. My name is Bob Venezia, and I live at 102. Mr. Venezia, we don't need your address anymore. You'd like to state it? Yes, sign. I want to say. Yes, I know that. So that you know, I am from Parsippany and not a carpet bag. Yes. You've stated um, that previously. Thank you. Before I um, get to my main topic, I just want to make a quick comment about some of the budget discussion that's been going on up here. Um, the previous administration, made, they made a lot of fiscal mistakes. But I think it's you're a little unfair when you, you know, you say with this accusations of, you know, kicking the can down the road because I was here at all the budget meetings and the, uh, the mayor always presented budget increases of you know 6.8 9 and they always got knocked down to like you know 3 and 2 so i mean he wanted to increase the budget and and uh, and you know you guys you wouldn't let them you knocked them down so if if there was you know, you guys were complicit in kicking the can down the road because you, you didn't let him get the increases that he wanted. And then when the new administration came in, he said, oh, I want 14.3. 14 oh, you got it. Uh, and the second thing was with regard to the water and sewer. That's another one where he really didn't kick the can down the road. It's true. He used it. He used the water and sewer utility money. And it went down to zero. When it went down to zero, what did he do? And what did you guys do? You, you know, to your credit, you you made an increase of 39.6 percent in the water and sewer. That was not kicking the can down the road. As a matter of fact, he created the surplus that enabled the new administration to use, you know. In, in the in its budgets now, if it wasn't you know if it wasn't for that 39 percent increase, there wouldn't be any uh, 
you know, transferring of money. And and I, I'm I'm really sorry that that has started up again because once you start it, you cannot stop it. And, uh, okay, now to um, what I came here to talk about. At a recent council meeting, the mayor mentioned that there are too many vacant and underutilized office properties in Parsippany and that the tax assessor doesn't expect the office market to recover until 2045. I would like to know what the tax assessor's future expectations are for the apartment market. In my opinion, the population growth for Parsippany, Morris County, and the state of New Jersey will not be able to absorb the overwhelming number of apartment units currently under construction or projected to be constructed soon. To make matters worse, many of the people who can afford to rent these apartments are fleeing the state. I believe that we're following down the same path of overdevelopment as that which caused the commercial glut that we are dealing with today. In fact, it seems to me that many of the apartment complexes under construction today will become the properties in need of rehabilitation tomorrow. I would really like to hear the tax assessor's view of the long-term apartment market. If he shares a similar opinion as mine, then I would like the council to develop a plan now so that Parsippany does not have to deal with vacant and underutilized apartment buildings in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Messi. Just one quick response to that, if you don't mind, Council President. No, please. Uh, uh, you know, uh, and let me correct myself, 2040, um, not 2045. I made a mistake with that with regards to the office market. We have a great tax assessor, and um, we're bound by certain things that the state requires us to meet, which is not by doing any municipality, and you know one of them is the affordable housing. And you know that the next round of affordable housing is in 2025, the Mount Laurel. That we're going to get slammed again. But these office buildings have to be repurposed. There's, there's, or our ratables are going to tank. That's what's going to happen. So we're trying to find the best methods of what we can do. Uh, we lucked out with Top Golf. That could have been 600 units over there. Um, we, we're lucking out with a possibly a lifetime fitness. Um, that could be another six, seven hundred units over um, by the Century Drive Macaulay over there. So far, we've scathed all any any type of um, residential, but that's going to end. Why? Because and we have and I can have the tax assessor come to a meeting and give his opinion on it um, with regards to the apartments. But you know, knowing and being an affordable housing administrator myself, you start to see clearly what the state is not just Parsippany. It's Montville. Montville's getting hammered. All the towns are going to get hammered. And, um, you know, you, you know, we could talk about all the other things that were passed prior. And, you know, let's face it, you know, the, the, the Board of Adjustments, the, the Planning Board are bound by the, the, the strict orders of the courts to abide by them. And everyone, if anybody wants to challenge me out and say that's not true, okay, well, if it's not true, then try to deny a project and see what happens when it becomes inherently beneficial use and the courts come and take all your zoning rights away. That's what will happen. That's what happened in Inglewood Cliffs, and that's what's going to happen in Parsippany if we decide not to negotiate with these developers. That's what's happening, and it's a shame. I, I, it shouldn't happen, but the legislators in the, in, in, in the state, for some reason, can't find a way to change the way the affordable housing criteria is. And who, who's it lie on? It lies on us. Why? And you come and, you, and you, you call us out and you have every right to do that. Why? Because we vote on the town that we live in, not the legislators. They vote in Trenton. So it's a lot different. And I'm, and I'm not pointing fingers at anybody because I know, I know the law pretty well. I know what's coming our way. And I think the only thing we can do is educate the public by having seminars at the high schools with, with the top affordable housing attorneys to explain to the residents what's coming to Parsippany, what's coming to Morris County, what's coming to Essex County, what's coming to all the counties in the state, not by the means and control of our own municipality. The state can't make a decision. This courts did. So when the Supreme Court made their decision, good luck trying, and you're bound by it. It's, and, and that's what it is. So 
the only thing we, we have left to do is negotiate the numbers down as much as we can get them. So thank you. Make a, Go ahead. I was going to make a motion to close the public Please. meeting. Second. Oh, we have somebody. Uh, no, you can come up, ma'am. Oh. Oh, well, I didn't see you. Okay. I was, this is my first time coming to the public, so I wasn't sure when I could come up. Um, hi, my name is Susanna, and um, I work here in Persephone on Jefferson Road between Smith Road and um, Persephone Boulevard, or Persephone Avenue. And I wanted to address, address the resurfacing project that's happening here. I would like to suggest that in that project, you would add a bike lane or a, um, a sidewalk. And why I suggest this is because in that line, there are bus stops for the 79X bus and for the 874. Um, and as someone who has taken those that bus and had to cross the street or to wait <clears throat> before and after work, I noticed that it's pretty hard to cross. Um, the cars go 35 miles per hour. And during uh, rush time, you know, trying to get into the office, like more highly trafficked, and people are, you know, trying to speed to get to the 8 o'clock, um, to their 8 o'clock meetings. So, um, I was looking into it. I really believe that this would be a great idea because there are a lot of initiatives and you know several grants um, to add micro mobility pedestrian facilities to towns. And some of those grants are the Safe Streets for All grant and the Transportation Alternatives grant, um, which I'm sure you might be familiar with. And I also read the Persephone Master Plan that was published in, I believe, the past few years. And I saw that one of the goals was to adopt a complete streets initiative when building. Um, and another one would be the access to the town trails. So just off of um, Jefferson Road, there is a Sheraton walking trail. Um, if you were to expand the like a sidewalk or a bike lane on Jefferson Road, it would also connect with the Hanover Patriots Path Trail. So that's meeting up another goal that was set in the uh, Persephone Master Plan. And it would also make office buildings more attractive to sellers. I know we just spoke about you know the office building market being hit. I believe that in the future, um, or the future of work, people are going to want different methods of getting to and from work. Um, also wanted to address, because I know that Park Persephone and um, 15, 15 at Route 10, those developments are going to be trying to bring in more people. So we would, along with those and the uh, increase the potential future increase of traffic also stated by the master plan um, we really want to build other types of transportation so um, that is my transportation uh, or my advice to the township and thank you for hearing me thank you thank, thank you for thank coming you. up thank you I'll ask our BAs would it be possible to have the Township engineer, look at um, maybe uh, striping a, a a walking path along one of those roads. Uh, we, can, we can definitely take a look at that. Anybody else? Seeing nobody come forward, I'd like to make a motion to close the public meeting. Second. Motion made by Mr. Musella, seconded by Mr. Karifi. Roll call, Mr. Karifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. And Ms. Guignani. Yes. Roll is closed. Ordinance 2023, semicolon 10, and ordinance of the Township Council of the Persephone, Troy Hills County of Morris, State of New Jersey, amending Chapter 430, Zoning Article XLI, Wireless Telecommunications of the Code of the Township of Persephone, Troy Hills. Be it resolved that the above ordinance be introduced, read by title, and passed on first reading at the meeting of the Township Council of the Township of Persephone, Troy Hills, held on August 22, 2023. 
and that said ordinance be further considered for second reading and final passage at a meeting to be held on September 19, 2023 at 7 p.m. Prevailing time or as soon thereafter as the matter may be reached at the municipal building in said township, at which time all persons interested shall be given an opportunity to be heard concerning said ordinance. Be it further resolved that the clerk be authorized and directed to it advertise said ordinance with the notice of introduction thereof being published in the official newspaper according to law motion to approve the above resolution by myself second motion made by mr negria seconded by mr karifi roll call mr karifi yes mr. piro yes mr misala yes mr negria yes mr. Nyani. yes motion passes ordinance 2023 colon 11 an ordinance of the township council of the township of Pacific Troy Hills County of Morris, State of New Jersey, amending Chapter 430, zoning, Section 430-8, terms defined of the code of the Township of Pacific Troy Hills. Be it resolved that the above ordinance be introduced, read by title, and passed on first reading at a meeting of the Township Council of the Township of Pacific Troy Hills, held on August 22nd, 2023, and that said ordinance be further considered for second reading and final passage at a meeting to be held on September 19th, 2023 at 7 p.m. prevailing time or as soon thereafter as the matter may be reached at the municipal building in said township, at which time all persons interested shall be given an opportunity to be heard concerning said ordinance. Be it further resolved that the clerk be authorized and directed to advertise said ordinance with the notice of introduction there are being published in the official newspaper according to law. Motion to approve the above resolution by myself. Second. Second. Motion made by Mr. DePiro, seconded by Mr. Neglia. <coughs> Roll call. Mr. Carifi? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. <coughs> Mr. Misello? Yes. Mr. Neglia? Yes. <coughs> and uh, Ms. Grignani? Yes. Motion passes. Ordinance 2023 colon 12, an ordinance of the Township Council of Township for Sipity Troy Hills, County of Morris, State of New Jersey, amending Chapter 430, zoning section 430-277.1, electric vehicle supply service equipment of the code of the Township for Sipity Troy Hills. Be it resolved that the above ordinance be introduced by, read by title and passed on first reading at a meeting of the Township Council, the Township of Sipity Troy Hills held on August 22nd, 2023 and that said ordinance be further considered for second reading and final passage at a meeting to be held on September 19th, 2023 at 7 p.m. Prevailing time or soon thereafter as the matter may be reached at the municipal building in said township at which time all persons interested shall be given an opportunity to be heard concerning said ordinance. Be it further resolved that the clerk be authorized and directed to advertise said ordinance with the notice of introduction thereof being published in the official newspaper according to law. Motion to approve the above ordinance by myself. Second. Motion. Or made by Mr. Karifi, seconded by Mr. Musella. Roll call, Mr. Karifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Ms. Grignani. Yes. Motion passes. Ordinance 2023, colon 13. In ordinance of the Township Council of the Township of Parsippany Troy Hills, County of Morris, State of New Jersey, amending Chapter 430, Zoning Section 430 267, Development Regulations of the Code of the Township of Parsippany Troy Hills, be it resolved that the above ordinance be introduced, read by title, and passed on first reading at a meeting of the Township Council of the Township of Parsippany Troy Hills, held on August 22nd. 2023 and that said ordinance be further considered for second reading and final passage at a meeting to be held on September 19th, 2023 at 7 p.m. prevailing time or as soon thereafter as the matter may be reached at the municipal building in said township at which time all persons interested shall be given an opportunity to be heard concerning said ordinance be it further resolved that the clerk be authorized and directed to advertise said ordinance with the notice of introduction thereof being published in the official newspaper according to law Motion to approve the re above resolution made by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Misella, seconded by Mr. Carifi. Roll call, Mr. Carifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Misella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. And Ms. Grignani. Yes. <coughs> Motion passes. Ordinance 2023, Assembly 14, an ordinance to the Township Council of the Township of Troy Hills, County of Morris, State of New Jersey, amending Chapter 430, Zoning of the Code of the Township of Troy Hills. Be it resolved that the above ordinance be introduced, read by title, and passed on first reading at a meeting of the Township Council of the Township of Troy Hills held on August 22nd, 2023, 
and that said ordinance be further considered for read second reading and final passage at the meeting to be held on September 19, 2023 at 7 p.m. prevailing time or soon thereafter as the matter may be reached at the municipal building in said township at which time all persons interested shall be given an opportunity to be heard concerning said ordinance. Be it further resolved that the clerk be authorized and directed to advertise said ordinance with the notice of introduction thereof being published in the official newspaper according to law. Motion to approve the above resolution by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Karifi, seconded by Mr. Neglia. Roll call. Mr. Karifi? Actually, that was Mr. Neglia, and then I seconded. Oh, so the motion was made by Mr. Neglia, seconded by Mr. Karifi. Roll call. Mr. Karifi? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Mr. Musella? Yes. Mr. Neglia? Yes. And uh, Ms. Grignani? Yes. Motion passes. Order 2023, column 15. Bond ordinance providing for the purchase of various equipment for the golf utility of the township of Pacific Troy Hills in the county of Morris State of New Jersey, the township, appropriating $216,000, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $205,710 bonds or notes to finance part of the cost thereof. Be it resolved that the above ordinance be introduced, read by title, and passed on first reading at a meeting of the Township Council of the Township of Pacific Troy Hills held on August 22, 2023, and that said ordinance be further considered for a second reading and final passage at a meeting to be held on September 19, 2023, at 7 p.m. prevailing time, or as soon thereafter as the matter may be reached at the municipal building in said township, at which time all persons interested shall be given an opportunity to be heard concerning said ordinance. Be it further resolved that the clerk be authorized and directed to advertise said ordinance with the notice of introduction there being published in the official newspaper according to law. Motion to approve the above resolution. Second. Motion made by Mr. DePiro, seconded by Mr. Neglia. Roll call. Ms. Carifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Ms. Cognani. Yes. Motion passes. Ordinance 2023 colon 16, bond ordinance providing for various 2023 capital acquisitions and improvements for the township of Pacific Troy Hills, County Morris, State of New Jersey, the township appropriating, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, $9,311,700, therefore authorizing the issuance of $8,868,271 bonds or notes of the township to finance part of the cost thereof. It resolved that the above ordinance was introduced, read by title, and passed on first reading at the meeting of the Township Council of the Township, Precipity Troy Hills, held on August 22, 2023. Let said ordinance be further considered for second reading and final passage at a meeting to be held on September 19, 2023, at 7 p.m., prevailing time or soon thereafter, as the matter may be reached at the municipal building in said township, at which time all persons interested shall be given an opportunity to be heard concerning said ordinance. Be it further resolved that the clerk be authorized and directed to advertise said ordinance with the notice of introduction thereof being published in the official newspaper according to law. Motion to approve the above ordinance by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Karifi, seconded by Mr. Neglia. Roll call. <coughs> Mr. Karifi? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Mr. Musella? Yes. Mr. Neglia? Yes. Ms. Guignani? Yes. Motion passes. Ordinance 2023, colon 17, bond ordinance providing for various sewer utility capital improvements in and by the Township of Parsippany Troy Hills in the County of Mar, State of New Jersey, appropriating $6.4 million, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $6.4 million in bonds or notes to finance the cost thereof, be it resolved that the above ordinance be introduced, read by title, and passed on first reading at a meeting of the Township Council of the Township of Parsippany Troy Hills held on August 22, 2023, and that said ordinance be further considered for second reading and final passage at a meeting to be held on September 19th, 2023 at 7 p.m. prevailing time or as soon thereafter as the matter may be reached at the municipal building in said township at which time <coughs> all persons interested shall be given an opportunity to be heard concerning said ordinance. Be it further resolved that the clerk be authorized and directed to advertise said ordinance with the notice of introduction thereof being published in the official newspaper according to law. Motion to approve the above resolution made by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Musella, seconded by Mr. Karifi. Roll call. Mr. Karifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Mr. Guignani. Yes. Motion passes. 
Ordinance 2023, colon 18, bar and ordinance providing for the replacement of various wells for the water utility of the township of Precipitatory Hills in the county of Morris, state of New Jersey, appropriating $3,650,000 there, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $3,650,000 in bonds or notes to finance the cost thereof. Be it resolved that the above ordinance be introduced, read by title, and passed on the first reading at a meeting of the Township Council of the Township of Detroit Hills held on August 22nd, 2023, and that said ordinance be further considered for second reading and final passage at a meeting to be held on September 19, 2023, at 7 p.m. prevailing time, or as soon thereafter as the matter may be reached at the municipal building in said township, at which time all persons interested shall be given the opportunity to be heard concerning said ordinance. Be it further resolved that the clerk be authorized and directed to advertise said ordinance with the notice of introduction thereof being published in the official newspaper according to law. Motion to approve the above resolution by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Neglia, seconded by Mr. Caripi. Roll call. <coughs> Mr. Caripi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Micello. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. And Ms. Grignani. Yes. Motion passes. Ordinance 2023, color 19. Bond ordinance providing for the replacement of the Lake Hiawatha pump station in and by the township of Parsippany Troy Hills in the county of Morris, state of New Jersey, appropriating $1,100,000 therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $1,100,000 bonds or notes to finance the cost thereof. Be it resolved that the above ordinance be introduced, read by title, and passed on first reading at a meeting of the township council of the township of Pacific Troy Hills held on August 22nd, 2023, and that said ordinance be further considered for second reading and final passage at a meeting to be held on September 19th, 2023, at 7 p.m. prevailing time, or as soon thereafter as the matter may be reached at the municipal building in said township, at which time all persons interested shall be given an opportunity to be heard concerning said ordinance. Be it further resolved that the clerk be authorized and directed to advertise said ordinance with the notice of introduction thereof being published in the official newspaper according to law. Motion to approve the above resolution by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. DePiro, seconded by Mr. Neglia. Roll call. <coughs> Mr. Caripi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Micella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. And Ms. Grignani. Yes. Motion passes. Non consent agenda. Resolutions, please. Resolution 2023-121, declaring property identified as Block 202, Lot 1.9, and located at 6 Sylvan Way as an area in need of redevelopment in a non-condemnation <coughs> basis. Motion to approve the resolution by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Karipi, seconded by Mr. Neglia. Wait, are you doing the consent agenda? Non-consent agenda. Okay, non-consent, yeah. Motion made by Mr. Karipi, seconded by Mr. Neglia. Roll call. Mr. Karipi? Yes. Mr. Musella? Yes. No, Mr. Karipi, Mr. DePiro? Yes. Mr. Musella? I said yes. Yeah, I know. I, I was going oh. in the order. Yes. Mr. Yeah. Neglia? Yes. And uh, Ms. Grignani? Yes. The motion passes. R2023-122, yeah. Township Council Certification of the Annual Audit. Motion to approve the resolution above by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Micella, seconded by Mr. Caripi. Roll call, Mr. Caripi. Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Mr. Micella? Yes. Mr. Neglia? Yes. Ms. Grignani? Yes. Motion passes. R2023-123, approval, approve correction action plan 2022, municipal audit. Motion to approve the resolution above by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Neglia, seconded by Mr. Caripi. Roll call. Mr. Uh, Caripi? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Mr. Musella? Mis yes. Mr. Neglia? Yes. Ms. Grignani? Yes. Motion passes. R2023-124, authorizing cancellations of grant fund receivables and appropriated reserve balances. Motion to approve the resolution above by myself. Second. Second. Motion made by Mr. DePiro, seconded by Mr. Caripi. Roll call, Mr. Caripi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Ms. Grignani. Yes. Motion passes. R2023-125, cancel unexpended dedicated balances and general utility capital appropriations. Motion to approve the resolution by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Caripi, seconded by Mr. Neglia. Roll call, Mr. Caripi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. 
Mr. Neglia? Yes. And Ms. Grignani? Yes. Motion passes. Consen consent agenda, be it resolved, all items listed with an asterisk are routine and non-controversial by the Township Council and will be approved by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a council member so requests, <coughs> in which case the item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered in its normal sequence on the agenda. Motion to approve the consent agenda made by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Misella, seconded by Mr. Karipi. Roll call. <coughs> Mr. Karipi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Musella? Yes. Mr. Neglia? Yes. Ms. Grignani? Yes. The motion passes. Did you do an application first or no? No, no that's all, under That's all part of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Approval of payroll and bills list. CFO Leonard Ho recommends authorization for payment. Authorized payment of August 18, 2023. Regular and miscellaneous payroll of $1,650,000. Payment of bills from voucher list of 815.23 through 817.23. Two million five hundred forty-six thousand three hundred seventy-five dollars and fifty-four cents. Motion to approve the authorization of payment above by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Neglia, seconded by Mr. Karipi. Roll call, Mr. Karipi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. And Ms. Grignani. Yes. Motion passes. Motion to adjourn. Yes. Second. Motion made by Mr. DePiro, seconded by Mr. Neglia. <laughs> Oh, call. Mr. Uh, Karifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Like. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Yes. Mr. Musella? Yes. Mr. Neglia? Yes. Mr. Grignani? Yes. Okay, we're adjourned. Have a great night, everybody. All right. Now, please. I should do it.